Want to show your love of the ghost with the most while also having somewhere to store your handbook for the recently deceased? Then you are in the right place. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to make my newest pattern, the Showtime Bag. This is a Beetlejuice inspired messenger bag. However, in these instructions, I will be showing you how you can make this bag in any size and customize it to make it your own. So what are we waiting for? It's showtime. To make this project, you will need the materials listed on screen. Your yarn yardage will vary based on the desired finished size of your showtime bag. I have listed my yardage used on screen for you as a guide. I will be also showing you how to add a liner and an adjustable and detachable strap to your bag. Materials for both of these items are listed on screen as well. Please review this list of stitches and abbreviations that will be used throughout this tutorial. Before we get started, we will need to determine how many vertical stripes we will need to attain the desired width of your bag and how long the stripes will need to be. We will want each stripe to be 1.5 inches wide. Before we get started, we will need to determine how many vertical stripes we need to attain our desired width and how long our stripes need to be. You will need to know how tall, wide, and deep you would like your bag to be. For this example, we are trying to make a bag that is 9 inches tall, 12 inches wide, and 3 inches deep. Each vertical stripe should be 1.5 inches wide. Divide your desired bag width by 1.5. This will be your total number of stripes needed. In our example, with each stripe being 1.5 inches wide, we divide that by our width, 12 inches. This means that we would need a total of eight stripes. For this design, we would like an odd number of stripes for our bag. You can choose to either add or subtract a stripe if needed in order to obtain an odd number of stripes. In our example, it is an even number. I don't want to make my bag any smaller by subtracting a stripe, so I am going to add one stripe to the bag, making it nine stripes wide in total. This will ensure that the stripes on either side of the bag are the same color, giving the bag a more balanced appearance. Now we need to determine our bag panel's length. In order to do this, we need to do some more math. I know, I'm so sorry. Take your desired height of your finished bag and multiply that by three. Then add three inches or your desired bag depth. So that formula is bag height times three plus bag depth or three inches, which will equal your total bag panel length. For example, I would like this finished bag to be nine inches tall. So we are going to multiply nine by three, giving us 27. Then add three inches, which is 30 inches in total. So now we know that our bag panel needs to be nine stripes wide and 30 inches long, which will make our finished bag approximately nine inches by 13.5 inches by three inches. Make sense? Great. Let's get started. To start your bag panel, in black yarn, form a slip knot and chain until you reach your determined bag length. For example, 30 inches, which for me was 100 chains. Add one chain for turning and in the second chain from the hook, place a half double crochet in every chain until you reach the end of the row.
After completing your first row, be sure to double check your length and make sure that your stripe is the correct length. Once you're ready to proceed to row two, chain one, turn, and place a half double crochet in every single stitch until you reach the end of your row. Repeat that previous row until your stripe is 1.5 inches wide. For me, that was four rows. Cut your yarn and fasten off. With your white yarn, tie on to the last stitch of row four or your final row and pull up a loop onto your hook. Chain one and place a half double crochet in that same stitch and continue placing a half double crochet in every stitch until you reach the end of the row. Repeat the previous row until your white stripe is 1.5 inches wide, which for me was four rows total. Cut your white yarn and fasten off. Continue with this pattern of alternating four rows or 1.5 inches of half double crochet in black and four rows or 1.5 inches of half double crochet in white until you reach your necessary number of stripes to get to your desired bag width. In our example, that is 13 and a half inches or nine stripes total or 36 total rows. Once you've completed the necessary number of stripes for your bag panel, it's time to proceed to adding the side panels. To begin, we will need to mark our reference points for the side panels. Place your bag panel in front of you with the tails on the right side of you. The side facing up is now the right side of our bag. Starting from the tail's end on your right hand side, measure the bag height along the edge of the panel and place a stitch marker there. This will be called point A. For me, this was nine inches or 30 stitches. Starting from point A, measure three inches or your bag depth and place a stitch marker there. This will be called point B. For me, that was 10 stitches. Starting from point B, measure nine inches and place a stitch marker there. This will be point C. The number of stitches between points B and C should be the same number of stitches as there are from the right hand edge of the panel until point A. For me, that was 30 stitches. Count the stitches on the opposite edge of your panel and mark these same three points with stitch markers. I like to use the same color for each point on either side to simplify the process visually. Now that we have our reference points plotted, we can proceed to adding our side panels. Place your bag panel in front of you with the right side up and the tail section on your right. In C3 or your chosen side panel color, tie on to point B on the top edge of the panel. Chain one. Working in the back loops of every stitch, half double crochet in every stitch until you reach point C. Chain one and turn. Place a half double crochet in every single stitch. For me, this is 30 stitches. Repeat the previous row until your side panel is three inches tall or your desired bag depth. For me, that was eight rows in total. Cut your yarn and fasten off. Once your first side panel is complete, turn the bag panel around so that the tail side is on your left. 
in C3 or your desired side panel color, tie onto point C, chain one, and half double crochet in the back loops of the same stitch and every single stitch until you reach point B. Chain one, turn, and half double crochet in every stitch until you reach the end of the row. Repeat the previous step until your second side panel is just as wide as the first. Again, for me, this is eight rows. It's time to add a border to the flap edge of our bag panel. Hold your bag panel with the tails at the bottom and the right side facing you. Using neon green yarn, form a slip knot. Place your crochet hook through the side of the row at the edge of the bag panel. Place your loop onto your hook and yarn over to fasten the yarn onto your work. Chain one and begin placing a single crochet evenly spaced across the top edge of your bag panel. Chain one and turn. Place a single crochet in every one of your stitches. Turn and place a slip stitch in every one of your stitches. Cut your yarn, fasten off, and weave in your ends. Now it's time to make our internal pocket panel with slime drip trim. In neon green yarn or C4, form a slip knot and chain your bag width or 13 and a half inches. For me, that was 44 chains. chain one, and in the second chain from your hook, place a half double crochet in all of your chains. For me, that was 44 stitches. Chain one, turn. Place a half double crochet in every stitch. 
Repeat the previous row until your panel is at six inches long or two thirds of your bag height. For me, that was 14 rows. Once your pocket panel is the correct length, it's time to create our slime drip trim. This will be accomplished by chaining and placing stitches into the chain made for each slime drip, then anchoring the slime drips to the main panel. I placed a finished bag right here in front of us so that we can see the slime drips that we are making. You are welcome to make your own custom slime drip patterns or you can follow exactly with what I did. If your bag is a different length than mine, you will obviously need to alter your number and pattern of slime drips in order to make that fit your correct bag width. To start our slime drip trim for our pocket panel, we are going to chain one and turn. Do two single crochets and then to form our first slime drip, we will chain eight. Then we're going to skip two of the chains and do a double crochet. and then five single crochets. This will bring us to the end of our chain, and now we are going to single crochet into the next stitch on our pocket panel. For our next drip, we'll single crochet two, then we're going to chain six, Skip two chains and do a treble crochet. Then a double crochet. and then a half double crochet. And then a single crochet. And next we will do a single crochet to attach it to the panel. Next we will do two single crochets and then chain 11. Then we're going to skip three chains and do two treble crochets. followed by a double crochet. And 
a half double crochet. and four single crochet. Then we will single crochet to attach to our panel. For our next drip, we will do two single crochet then chain three, skip two chains to double crochet, and then single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. For our fifth drip, we'll do one single crochet, then chain six, skip one chain and do a half double crochet, then four single crochet back down the chain, and then we will do a single crochet to attach that drip to the panel. Next, we will do three single crochet, then we will chain nine, we'll skip three chains and do a treble crochet. then a double crochet, then five single crochet down the chain. Then we'll do a single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. Progress check. After six drips, it should look something like this. Next, we do two single crochets and chain five. We will skip two chains, then do a double crochet half double crochet, and a single crochet. Then we will single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. Do two single crochet. Now we will chain 11. Skip one chain, 
half double crochet, then do nine single crochet back down the chain. And then we will do a single crochet to attach it to our panel. Okay, let's see how we're shaping up now after our eighth drip. Looking good, looking good. For our ninth drip, we're going to single crochet, then chain three, skip one chain, we're gonna single crochet, then do another single crochet, and single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. For our 10th drip, we're gonna do two single crochets, then chain seven, skip two chains, then double crochet, half double crochet, slip stitch, then two single crochet, and a single crochet to attach your drip to the panel. Next, we will single crochet, then chain five. We'll skip one chain and do a half double crochet. Then three single crochet back down the chain. Then we will do a single crochet to attach this drip to the panel. We'll do two single crochet. And now we are going to chain 10. At the end here, we're going to skip two chains and treble crochet. Then double crochet. Then do five single crochet back down our chain. And then single crochet to attach our drip to our panel. Thirteenth drip, we're going to single crochet, then chain three, skip one chain and do a half double crochet, then a single crochet, and then a single crochet to attach this drip to our panel. Now we will do two single crochet, chain six, skip one chain and do a half double crochet in the next, 
and then four single crochet back down our chain and single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. Next we're going to do two single crochets and chain eight. We'll skip two and do a double crochet in the next. Then a treble crochet. Then a half double crochet. And three single crochet back down our chain. and a single crochet on the panel to attach the drip. We're at our final drip here. We're gonna do a single crochet and then chain three. Then skip one chain, do a half double. A single crochet and then single crochet to attach this drip to the panel. And then we will cut our yarn and fasten off, leaving a very long tail for sewing. That's it, your pocket panel is now complete. Let's talk about strap options. There are many ways that you could choose to add a strap to your bag but the decisions you need to make are which strap material you're going to use and how you want to attach it to your bag. We'll go over some options for both, but first we're just going to talk about materials. There is a variety of materials that you can use for straps, but here are some options. You can crochet a strap for your bag in a complementary color. Crocheted straps will add some nice charm and personalized flair to your crochet bag, but the downside is that they do tend to stretch out. My solution for this is to sew a ribbon down the center of the crochet strap. I hid this on the backside or the underside of my strap so that the ribbon would be less visible. Since the ribbon isn't going to stretch, it will keep my crochet strap from stretching. You can sew this in by hand or with a sewing machine if you have one. I am not fancy and I don't have a sewing machine yet, but I have seen people do this with some success online. In general, crochet straps do tend to stretch by about 25%, which you could factor in in your strap making. If you don't have a ribbon, just make sure to plan ahead that your strap is going to stretch. There are two different methods of crocheting a strap for your bag. You could crochet the length or crochet the width. Making a strap lengthwise is going to have the least amount of stretch, but it is a lot more tedious because it involves making a very long chain. An easier method is to make your strap by the width with a lot of short rows, which is exactly what I did. Mine is about six stitches wide. You can make a chain as wide as you want your strap to be and then keep making rows after rows until your strap is as long as you want it to be. We are making a 60 inch strap total. Our next option is super easy. You can just buy woven nylon strap material in your desired width and length and just cut it down to the size that you need. I will be showing you an example using this later on in this video. There are also a few other options that you could use for a strap for your bag. You could sew a strap out of fabric. If you are a good sewist and have a sewing machine, this could be something that is really simple for you. I am not that person, so I have not done that. It is possible. You could also use a sturdy ribbon um, for your strap and just cut it to the size that you need using it in the same way as we would use a nylon woven strap. 
You could also repurpose a strap from another bag that you have. Just take that off and start using it for this bag. There are also purchased ready-made straps available that you can get at some craft stores and online. Once you've chosen your strap material, you do have a couple more decisions to make. You will need to decide if you wanna make your strap removable and if you wanna make it adjustable. The simplest and easiest option is always gonna to be to just sew your strap directly to your bag at your desired length. To make it removable or adjustable, you will need to have some additional hardware. An adjustable strap will require two D rings or rectangle rings and a tri-glide slider, all in the same width as your strap. To make your strap removable, you will also need two swivel hooks in the width of your strap. In this example, I will be using 1.5 inch wide straps and hardware and will be making both removable and adjustable. The next thing we will need to make though for our strap is going to be our strap mounts for our D-rings and rectangle rings. If you're going to be making a crocheted strap that is not going to be removable or adjustable, it will just be attached directly to your bag, you can still get the same slime drip effect as we are going to get with the strap mounts by adding the final row or row eight of the strap mounts to either end of your crocheted strap. And that Sewing that part to your bag will get you the same kind of slime drip effect, especially if you make your strap out of the neon green color. This is all obviously a suggestion and you are welcome to customize your bag however you want. It's time to make our strap mounts. We will be making two of these in C4 or neon green. To start, leaving a long starting tail, form a slip knot and chain seven. Skip one chain and place a single crochet in the six remaining chains. chain one and turn. And for this row and the next five rows after that, so six rows total, we will place a single crochet in every single one of our six stitches. So we should end up with seven total rows of single crochet. Now it's time for us to form our slime drips for our mounts and we're gonna do this in the same manner as we did for our pocket panel. So for row eight, we're gonna start with chaining four, skip two of those chains, and then we're gonna double crochet in the next chain. Then single crochet and then do a single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. Then we're gonna do two more single crochet, chain eight, we'll skip two chains do a double crochet in the next. Then a treble crochet. Then a half double crochet. Then three single crochet down the chain. And a single crochet to attach our drip to the panel. Then we're gonna do another single crochet, chain five, and skip one chain, do a half double,
and then three single crochets back down our chain. And then do a single crochet into that final stitch of our strap mounts. Now we're going to cut our yarn leaving a long tail for sewing and then fasten off. We've got one strap mount, just need you to make a second one exactly the same as this one. These strap mounts are intended, as I said, for a 1.5 inch D ring or rectangle ring. If you're using smaller rings, like a one inch D ring, you will need to make some kind of an adjustment to these strap mounts to make them fit by either squishing the end of the mount inside of your thing and just making it work, or you can downsize your hook to make that smaller or start your strap mounts with four stitches instead of six and do your first three or four rows with just four stitches. Then do an increase on the next row on either end and then you'll have six stitches and finish the rest of the strap mounts as we did regularly just with six stitches for the rest of your rows. Now it's time for us to talk about lining your bag. Adding a lining to your bag will add stability and will help prevent your crochet from stretching out over time. I highly recommend you add a liner. I also recommend that you use a stiff interfacing layer, which is going to help your bag to hold its rectangular shape when in use. I used Fusible Pellon 71F interfacing for my bags. It bonds to your lining fabric with ironing, further helping your bag to be stable and remain rectangular over time. Before we proceed though, we need to talk a little bit about fabric choices. I recommend you use a strong fabric that is not going to stretch like a cotton. I used 100% cotton with a glow-in-the-dark print of spider webs. Be sure to wash and press your fabric before sewing it to make sure that your fabric is clean and that it will not shrink if the bag is ever washed later. It is very important to press your edges or seams in place to make sure that you get a clean finish around your sewn edges. If the print on your fabric is a directional one, please make sure that it is lined up in the correct direction before you adhere your interfacing or sew any parts in place. Next, we're going to measure our bag panel to get the correct measurements for our lining. You will need the length and width of your side panels and the length and width of your bag panel without the side panels. Be sure to add a seam allowance to these measurements to give yourself space to sew the panels together. Once you have your measurements, grab your lining fabric and measure out your three panels. That will be your two side panels and one main panel. For this example, I added a half inch of seam allowance, giving me two side panels that were 10 inches by 4 inches and one bag panel measuring 14.5 inches by 32 inches. Now let's talk about interfacing. We're going to be adding interfacing to the body of the bag only, leaving the flap much more flexible. Measure your two side panels for your bag out of interfacing without the seam allowance. For our example, that is nine inches by three inches. The main panel for our interfacing will be 13 and a half inches wide, which is our bag width, by 21 inches long, or your bag panel length minus your finished bag height. For example, our bag panel is 30 inches long if we subtract 9 inches, which is our finished bag height, that leaves us with 21 inches. When your finished panel is cut, measure 9 inches in from either side on the main panel and form creases to create the bottom of the bag. We're going to be using one long piece of interfacing and bending creases into it to save us from sewing additional seams. This will bend your interfacing into a U shape. If you're using fusible interfacing, place the fusible side of your interfacing against your lining fabric on the wrong side of the lining fabric. The side panels should be placed so that they are centered on the fabric, that way your seam allowance is visible on all sides. For the main panel, line the interfacing up on the fabric as shown on the graphic 
leaving seam allowance around edges on three sides and nine and a half inches on the fourth side. Press your fabric onto the interfacing from the fabric side using your iron according to the instructions on your interfacing. In this example, we are going to be using a Pelin 71F fusible interfacing. You can use a non-fusible interfacing, just make sure that you add a seam allowance to your interfacing panels, and then you can sew your fabric and your interfacing panels together to form the lining. To assemble your lining, place the side panels face down onto the main panel with the right sides together onto the end with the interfacing with their long edges aligned. Pin the long edges together, then sew them. I used a back stitch to sew along these edges. Fold the side panels out in a 90 degree angle and then fold your liner into that U shape along the creases that we made. Pin your side panels into place and then sew them together. Once they are completely sewn, set the liner aside for now. Now it's time for us to assemble our bag. Thread a tapestry needle with the C3 side panel color. Sew the side of the rows of the side panel to the back loops of the stitches between points B and A. When you reach point A, fold the panel so that the edge of the side panel meets the edge of the bag panel. Sew both loops of the side panel to the back loops only of the bag panel until you reach the last stitch. Sew through both loops of the final stitch, then secure firmly. I like to double stitch the final stitch for security. Repeat this process on the other side. It's time for us to attach the inside pocket panel of our bag. Pin your pocket panel to the inside of your bag as shown. Starting from one top corner, sew the pocket panel to the bag going down the side, across the final half double crochet row of your panel, or for me, row 14, then up the opposite side.
You can decide how many pockets you would like to divide this panel into. I chose to make it into four pockets total, which was two pin or hook pockets in the center with a larger pocket on either side. To create these individual sections, pin your pocket panel to your bag panel along the seam that you wish to create, then sew along that line. Now that your pocket panel is attached and divided up into pockets, we can move on to attaching our slime drips. Arrange your slime drips on your bag into the placement that you would like and then pin them down. Using that long remaining tail, sew the drips to your bag panel, working around the outside edge of each slime drip. Do I need to weave in my ends? Well, that really depends. If you're adding the lining like we are in this video, you do not need to weave in any of your ends. We are going to hide all of these tails with our lining layer. If you are not going to be lining your bag, I'm very sorry, but you will need to weave in all of these ends. You did it! Our crocheted bag has been completely assembled. If you are lining your bag, then please proceed with me to the lining assembly. If not, then you just need to weave in those ends and you can proceed to finishing the strap mounts or attaching the strap mounts if your strap is being attached directly to your bag. Now it's time to add the lining to our bag. Fold the seam allowance over the outside edges of your liner and insert the liner into the bag. Hide all the tails in between the lining and the bag. Then pin your liner in place. Whip stitch all along the top edge of the bag, securing the crocheted bag to the lining and interfacing. If you are adding magnetic snaps, depending on how they attach, you may need to add your magnetic snaps now. Once you have finished sewing the lining to the body of the bag, we can move on to attaching the lining to the flap. Fold the seam allowance of the fabric underneath the edges of the lining and place it along the flap. Once you have it arranged how you would like it, pin that in place, then sew the liner to the bag flap. Our lining is fully in place and it looks so good. We're almost done. It's time to move on to finishing the strap mounts. Wrap your strap mount around the flat bar of the D-ring. Thread the starting tail of your strap mount onto a yarn needle and sew the strap mount to the D-ring, being sure to keep the seam on the wrong side of the strap mount. Now 
Weave in your end and repeat this process for your second strap mount. Now it's time to attach our strap mounts to our bag. Decide where you'd like to attach your straps to your bag. I attached mine two inches down from the top of the bag. Position your strap mounts in place and then pin them to your bag. If you're going to be mounting your strap directly to your bag, you're going to be pinning and sewing your strap directly to the bag in this step instead of the strap mounts. Using the ending tail from your strap mount or additional green yarn, sew the slime drips in place just like you did for the inner pocket panel. Once the drips are attached, sew the mount in place horizontally. If your bag is lined, I recommend sewing through some of the interfacing without going through the lining fabric on the other side to help give the strap mount more stability. I also recommend sewing two rows of horizontal stitches for security. Repeat this process on the other side of your back. Now it's time for us to assemble our strap. Crochet your strap to your desired length, or if you're using a strap material like I'm showing you in this tutorial, cut your strap material to the desired length for your strap. For an adjustable strap, I recommend 60 inches. This means that when completed, my adjustable strap will be able to adjust down to 30 inches at the minimum. Wrap one end of your strap around the center bar of your dry glide slider. Pin this and then sew this in place. Place your strap down on a flat surface with the right side facing down and the seam side facing up. Feed one end of your swivel hook onto the strap. Make sure that the side with the hook is facing the right side of your strap. Now, feed the open end of the strap through both bars of the tri-glide slider.
Now when we flatten the strap, our hook should be trapped in place. All right, one hook is secure. Let's move on and do our second swivel hook. Take the open end of the strap and feed your second swivel hook onto your strap, making sure to keep the hook side on the right side of the strap. Pin the strap and then sew it in place around the swivel hook. And that's it, our strap is done. If you'd like to make an adjustable strap that isn't removable, feed the strap through the D-ring or rectangle rings on the side of your bag instead of through the swivel hooks on the steps we just did, and you can have an adjustable strap that is not removable. Our final step is to add any closures to your bag if you are using them. It's not required, but you can if you'd like to make sure your bag closes securely. If you're using magnetic snaps, attach those now if you haven't already. And that's it, our bag is complete. Let's take it outside and enjoy it in the sunshine. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it and that you enjoy your Showtime bag. If you did, please consider liking this video and subscribing because I upload crochet videos like this as well as vlogs every other Wednesday and I love to make new crochet friends. Speaking of crochet friends, follow me over on social media. I am Graceface Creates on all platforms and I post daily. If you post your finished bags online, please be sure to tag me because I would love to see them. Thanks again for watching and happy crocheting.